You know, some children get to a point they say, I want to move out. And some want to move out not because they're ready, because they're getting tired of rules. I'm getting tired of a curfew. I'm getting tired of told when to get up. I'm getting tired of told when to go to bed. I'm getting tired of going to church. I want to be able to miss some Sundays and hang out with my friends. You're so hell bound foolish. After you get out there with your friends, sin and death. Give me Romans 6.23. I want it to be good for you unstable thinkers who put your friends over God and your love for friends is above your love for God. Your friends ain't keeping you. Your friends is not your provider. Your friends is not your protector. Your friends is not your giver of life. Your friends is not your breadwinner. Your friends ain't putting a roof over your head. What did he say? In the book of Romans, chapter 6, and at verse 23. 23. For the wages of sin You know, when you got a job, you get paid. It's called what? Wages. It's called what? Wages. Sin is work. It's labor. So you want to run around with your friends so you don't be in church on Thursday and on Sunday and on Tuesday and you'd rather ride around with your friends. I know things aren't working on this, but I'm going to work on you, God knows. You want to hang out with your friends that's about nothing but smoking and cussing and gambling and having sex with a bunch of whores. You know, am I right, I said? Some want to be by themselves so they don't hear the voice of a father or a voice of a mother who lay them out. So the quote is, I'm grown. Let's analyze that. Everybody all right? If you're not, maybe you will be by the time we're done. I'm grown. When you are grown, now most young people say I'm grown, they narrow it down to having a good job, can pay their own bills, and may put a roof over your head. Grown is bigger than that. You're gonna have money, be able to buy a house, But mentally and emotionally, you're unstable. Therefore, it handicaps you being grown. Because you can't use clear judgment. You hang around the wrong people. Grown and weak is destruction. Are you listening? Amen. Most folk never thought of that. I'm grown. Yeah. Are you weak? Yeah. Destruction. Because once I'm grown and get on my own, but yet I'm weak, I'm going to have people at my house that shouldn't be there. I'm going to have people in my apartment that shouldn't be there. And they're going to be a great influence on me. And I'm going to be home with my friends and not in church. So you're not as grown as you think. Your measuring stick of being grown is natural maturity. But where is God at in your development? That's true. Where is God at in your development? Huh? Where is God at in your development? When you're grown, and the scriptures is interwoven with your way of thinking. You know how to use good judgment. You know how to make right and mature decisions. When I was growing up 
And I was uncertain, or even if I thought I was certain, I went and talked to my father. Yes, I did. I talked to my father. Because he had experience. He been where I was trying to get. So I went and talked to my father. I wanted his input. When we outgrow instructions, we're, gonna, we're not going to survive. Even I got to submit myself to the instructions of the scriptures. I got to do it. Otherwise than that, I'll be lost. And if I'll be lost, not submitting myself to the instructions of scriptures, what do you think about you? You want to get on your own? Listen, when you can get on your own, dress rehearsal is home. If you cannot even pay your phone bill, you can't take care of yourself. Hmm? If, you, if you can't pay your phone bill, you can't take care of yourself. If you got to pay down on a pair of shoes and just can't outright buy them and you got to take 20 payments to get them out from pay less because you won't pay more. You ain't ready to get on your own. Being grown, advertising your grown without humility, you would advertise your ignorance because you will make decisions and rush to judgment that you will regret and you will have to backpedal. My father gave me a lot of instructions. I mean a lot of them. And I value every last one of them. Even when I was angry with him. And because my father was the type, he didn't bite his tongue. And he was the type, when I tell you he did not care whether you like it or not, he never talked to you in his mind thinking you're going to like what he said. That wasn't even on his agenda. His agenda of talking to you had nothing to do with he liking, thinking, well, Maybe he gonna accept it. Maybe he ain't gonna accept it. My father just plowed into you and told you. And it turned out, just like he said. There were some of my brothers and sisters that my father gave advice to and didn't listen. And yet when they didn't listen, it turned out just like he said. Get me, I want to soak you a little. For the wages. The wages, the of, pay. Of sin. Of sin. Is death. What? Is death. For the wages of sin. That? When you value teaching and your girls leave out and get on their own and you teach them, don't have no boys at your house. When they value that, they won't have no boys there. No friends that they knew from school and no little snotty boys from church. And I realize that. Amen. That's, that's upholding the way you've been raised. And that's respecting the commandment of God. A lot of folk want to get on their own because they want to party. They want every old two-legged, filthy, no good, rotten, bad-smelling dog in their apartment or in their house. That's the type of freedom they want in the absence of God. Amen. Do you hear this? For the wages of sin. The wages. Of sin. Wages. The pay. The consequences. Get on your own. It ain't no man that's not your husband should have a key to your place. But what happened to the spirit? <laughs> yeah. Glory to God, the man smacked Micaiah and said, which way the spirit went? 
Ain't no man that ain't your husband unless it's your father or your blood brothers. Should have a key to your place. There ain't no sister to have a key to your place. She ain't your blood sister or your mother or your wife. That's why some of y'all want to get on your own because you want to leave church. But if you leave from the word of God, what's your next place? But to hell. So you got to go to hell. There's no other way for you to go but into hell. Amen. No sister should be in your place cooking. And she ain't your wife and you come home and she got your stuff ready. She ain't your wife. Unless you hired a maid. <laughs> and she shouldn't be so old until the thought of her is equal to abomination. She's too old and tired to want to do something. Well, Pastor Jennings, I asked the sister to come over because I need some tips on decorating. Don't give me your little weak excuse. <laughs> you don't know how to decorate, then you shouldn't have got on your own. Go ask your mama. <laughs> huh? Go to a store and go ask the dealer. Go ask the stiller there. I'll help me pick out this, that, and the other. <laughs> Amen. Then when your house look like Barney, then you will understand. <laughs> this is that old school teaching. I saw some of you want to get on your own. Amen. Young man don't have a bunch of boys just hanging out in your place and you on your own. You don't want to make your place a rep like it's a reputable spot to your apartment complex. You in the church, your neighbors shouldn't hear your music. You're in the church. This teaching's supposed to follow you all the way to the grave, regardless of how old you get. Amen. Amen. Woman don't live there. Her clothes shouldn't be in your place. Man don't live there. His clothes should not be left in your place. Why? Why is it there? See how quiet it is? Quiet too. Reason why it's quiet, but you see the way God shifts gears? Brother, when God shifts gears, God knows what the people ought to have because silence hit. And you know what silence hit? Because there's so many guilty in here. If my children is on their own, I should be able to come to their place anytime without them rushing somebody out. Amen. What are like a child get on their own but don't want the parents to know where you live? What you got to hide? I wanted my parents to know where I live because I wanted them to come there. Come there, check it out. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. What did he say? For the wages of sin is what? death. The wages of sin is death. Don't let nobody push you to get out on your own and you know you can't do it. You don't go get a house or an apartment to see can you do it. 
not an experiment. Well, I want to see, can I go skydiving? I want to see, can I float? So I'm going to jump off the Empire State Building. Why do I go into the top of the Empire State Building and take a hefty trash bag? Because I want to see, does it work like a parachute? <laughs> I just want to see, does it work? Because Bugs Bunny said it did. I didn't go to the top of that building and jump off. The moment a whole burst of that thing, it's sure death. I may as well scream until I lose my voice. It's sure death. My father didn't have to convince me. He see further than me. He had to convince me of that. I knew he did. That's why I was able to listen. The reason why I was able to listen. Before the Lord showed me my wife, he told my father. I knew my father knew what he was talking about, but I was very honest with my father. I told him, I, Pop, I mean no disrespect, but you already married. I don't want got to get married, and the Lord showing you, don't help me. I said, then let the Lord show me something. You already got mama. Exactly what I told my pop. I never forget. He was in the mirror shaving. All that ladder. He said, all right. <laughs> he said, all right. He said, just to show us God is my God, he's going to show you. He said, because what you're saying is right. I said, yeah, pop. I mean, you married. All eight of us is here. We here already. So you come telling me this is my wife. That's all right. He said, but the Lord showed it to me. I said, that's all right too. But the Lord ain't show you anything for you to marry her. You got mama. I said, then let the Lord show me something. I said, because I'm going to tell you straight up, Pop. If the Lord don't show me nothing, it ain't going to be nothing. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. And I wasn't moving. Then the Lord showed me, then I was, amen. And my wife can tell you, I was not the type of man that was in a hurry to get married. God was first then, and God is first now. Because if she didn't, if she didn't want God, I didn't want her. If she wanted me more than she wanted God, I still wasn't going to marry her. Because that's priorities messed up. Being a natural help to me is one thing. Being a spiritual help to me is another category. And they got to be balanced on both ends. You being raised in the truth, young people, and you got in mind and get married, you got to look further than someone being a natural help to you. They got to be balanced. A natural help and a spiritual help. If he's already wishy-washy about church, lose your interest. If she's already wishy-washy about God and church, lose your interest. Be able to recognize the pretense of interest versus the real thing. Amen. When my wife started coming, she started coming to church before I was interested in her. But sometimes a person don't start coming to church until they find out you're interested in them. Then they start coming to church more. Right then, that's telling you that's a bad investment. Are you listening? Get me. I want the soap you get on your own. For the wages of sin, the is, wages death. Of sin is death. You are die. Never advertise to everybody where you live. Talking about a house woman. You may regret it. 
You may regret it. Somebody come in there and got a spirit attached to them and then they leave but their spirits stay there and make your house their house. We don't think that far and that deep. Mother housewoman, you got to be very selective. Amen. I didn't have no house warm. It was warm when I got in there. <laughs> Amen. Before I got married and brought my wife in my apartment, I went and got the apartment and furnished it, everything. All she had to do was bring her clothes. But I went in there and prayed. I didn't know who lived there before me. I prayed. Because I wanted God to get rid of every foul thing that was left there. Move to Sharon Hill, pray. Move to Drexel, pray. I want every foul, hallelujah. Glory to God, every foul thing. God. Having knowledge of the Bible make you use better judgment in things. And you approach things differently from what you normally would approach. And you ain't got no business at no brother house. And no brother have no business inviting no sister at his apartment. When you do it, brother, you disrespect God and you disrespect leadership. And if you already disrespect what the leadership and you ain't married, you're going to be more disrespectful if you get married. Ain't no brother in here. You better not invite none of my daughters to your house. Now my daughters better not be held bound and go. Because that means you don't respect me as your leader and you don't respect me as her father. And if she go, she don't respect me as her father and you're both going to hell. That goes for my sons too. No sister better not invite them to your apartment. And you better not go. And no faggot brother better not invite no other brother to his apartment. And I relax that. You struggling with homosexuality? Don't you invite no brother to your place. None. Now, I'm not playing either. You don't like it, you shouldn't be here. Now you listen to the old troublemaker. If a person cannot trust themselves, you ain't ready to get on your own. Am I right? If you can't trust yourself, you know you cannot get on your own. Seven chapter first Corinthians. This is what the Holy Ghost brought here today. And brother, I fill it all down in my sanctified soul. Hear this. First Corinthians chapter seven. Begin at verse one. First Corinthians chapter seven and at verse one. That's right. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me. Concerning the things wherein ye wrote unto me. It is good. It is good. For a man not to touch a woman. Do you hear that? It is good for a man not to touch a woman. You're in the apartment. Bill is there. Harvey is there. Peter is there. Paul is there. John is there. Bartholomew. Levi. Gad. Simeon. Asher. Benjamin and Joseph and Manasseh and Dan and Nephtali, Enoch is there, Elijah and Elisha. <laughs> Moses, Aaron, Joshua, all the judges, Abihu, Nadab, Issachar, even Bowsabub is there. <laughs> 
Any time you know you don't trust yourself, why in the world would you run and get on your own? And you already know you weak and you don't trust yourself, your apartment will come a den of thieves. Get it? You better hear the old man. Some of you ain't got no father. That's where I come in at. And some of you do got one and I'm still coming in on you. Get me. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me. Concerning the things wherein ye wrote unto me. It is good for a man not to touch a woman. You know you're attracted to that man. He ain't got, he, he ain't got the business in your apartment. Walk around trying to hold hands. It's good not to what? Not to touch. You ain't married to him. You ain't got him in holding his hand. You ain't got him in his hugging him, holding his hand, rubbing his back, rubbing his head. The Bible said. It is good. I don't care if he got a cramp in his neck so bad. He look like the back of Notre Dame. Let a chiropractor get it out. Keep your little bony fingers to yourself. <laughs> Am I right or that? <laughs> the Holy Ghost says what? It is good. For it is good for a man not for to a touch. Man not, 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 not to touch. Not. It is act dumb all you want. This will travel you to the grave. It, it is good. For a man not to touch a woman. I'm a man. If you're a man, you will humble yourself to what God said. It is good. You think a man is someone that rebel against God? You ain't no real man. That's the nature of a beast. A real man is one that take his medicine and take what God said. Because only God can make you a man. God said, let us make man. How you want to make him? In my image. I want him to be like me. You don't trust yourself? You ain't ready to get on your own. Hmm? You don't trust yourself? You ain't ready to get on your own. All right, listen to the old man. Because you're going to find yourself trying to lure people to your place. Don't trust yourself. Amen. Calling gay friends and dyke girls. Call an escort service. So some hoes can come by and give you some AIDS. Then you want prayer. <laughs> Call a hoe. You got any syphilis? Yeah, come on, bring it to me. <laughs> I want some syphilis. <laughs> because today, folks, they just go after anything. Am I right? You a single person, and you a sister, ain't no brother from the church to be in your place. You know I'm telling the truth. You know it's the truth. You a single brother, and ain't no sister should be in your place, and you a single sister, ain't no brother should, be. I don't wanna hear nothing about help you decorate. If you colorblind, that's your problem. If your eye offend you, the Lord said pluck it out. Better to go in the life main than to have both of those eyes and go to hell. I'm talking what the Bible say here. It is good for a man. I'm not, not sent to be your friend. I ain't trying to be a friend of none of you. I'm sent to be your teacher and your preacher. I ain't 
trying to be your friend. Do you hear? It is good for a man not to touch a woman. It's written. You ain't got nobody holding hands, arm around and waist, nothing. What the Holy Book said? Sitting at the table, you ain't got nobody rubbing her hands, nothing. There ain't no something should be rubbing no brother on his back, on his head, nothing. It is good. The Lord said it. It is good for a man not to touch a woman. And what's the reason? Nevertheless, to avoid. That's why it's good not to. To avoid, to fornic avoid fornication. What should you do? Let every man have his own wife. Just as easy to find a good man as it is a cat. That's the power of a Ferrari. When you raise the hood, a cat is in there running. <laughs> <laughs> like the Flintstones, you raise the hood, a cat in there running, sweating. <laughs> good to God. It's hard to find a good man. Some people come to me, Pastor, do you see a man for me? I ain't looking. <laughs> I ain't looking. Now, if you come tell me you're interested in somebody, then I talk to him. And if I tell you straight up, he ain't no good, don't be a fool and keep bugging me like I'm supposed to change my mind. If he ain't fit, he ain't fit. And if it don't fit, you got to quit. The fact that Jim is maybe, maybe you can work with him. If I preach the word of God, that's how I work with him. That's how I work with him by teaching him. If a young man don't respect his own father, he ain't gonna respect you. If he don't respect his own father and his own mother, he ain't gonna respect you. If a woman talk back to her mother and talk back to her father and you marry her, she gonna talk back. She ain't gonna respect you. If her mother and father talk to her and she's slamming the door on them, she gonna slam the door on you. <coughs> Are you listening? Because you want to get married, that doesn't mean you marriage material. This podium here is wooden material. I don't care if somebody want a suit out of it. This wooden material ain't designed for you to put on like a suit. Walking around making noise like a bunch of toothpicks. Huh, Brother Woody? <laughs> Are you getting it? Good men is hard to come by. A good woman is hard to come by. I mean a good woman is hard to come by. Just as easy to find a good woman as it is a snowflake that take a thousand years to reach from heaven to the earth. And then when it hit the earth, it turned to a city. Already populated with snow people. That's how hard it is. Anybody can get caught up in the hype of marriage, get the gown, get the suit, walk down the aisle. That's just a 20 minute event, if that. Short. You got to roll up your sleeve and be willing to endure tallery. If you argue, but yet don't hate. Today, people argue and hate. I mean, they hate you. Brother, don't you even suggest marrying no sister or even talk about you engaged. You don't respect the parents and go to the parents first. Go to the parents first. Sister, don't even get so close to nobody. 
Talk to your parents first. Parents may see something that you don't. And sometimes, don't think a parent got to be saved to see something either. You know? Yeah, a parent ain't got to be saved to see something. Oh, no. No, they don't. Sometimes the experience make them see things. Get me. I want to soak you a little. It I is. know it's taking on working on this, but my God, it's good anyway. Yes, it is. Amen. What is that? It is good for a man not to touch a woman. Why? Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. Somebody come in your place before you know your place is infested with all kinds of spirits that never been there. And then they leave and the spirits stay behind. Now all of a sudden you hear this walking noise in your house that never been there. Things banging that don't, it normally it wasn't making that noise. Radio's coming on and you ain't turning it on. It's coming on and it's unplugged. Washing machine come on and it ain't no clothes in it. It's so silly, so foolish, so blind. The spirit of the devil is real. And there's some men don't even know that Satan is following them and there's some women don't know it. Don't you know some people attract evil spirits? They attract them because their character and their nature and their behavior. Their behavior pattern makes the devil stick to them like glue. I dealt with so many cases like that. Sister one day called my office and I was on Frankfurt Avenue panicking and hollering. I'm like, hey, hey, wait, hey, wait, 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 wait. Who is this? Let's set the song so. What's going on with you? What, what you yelling for? Pastor Jennings, I'm in my place and the lights is coming on and off. I said, then turn them off. She said, it ain't me. I'm just in the corner. She said, I'm in the corner and they just turning on and off. I said, then leave. You see, I'm too scared to get out of here. I said, well, what you want me to do? She said, can you come pray? I said, no. I can pray over the phone. <laughs> I ain't coming to your place. <laughs> I pray over the phone, but I ain't coming to your place. I can get over the phone. Lord Jesus. So I said, well, Pastor, why didn't you take some brothers? For me to go somewhere and cast out a spirit, brothers got to be strong. If not, and I do take them, when they leave and the spirit is cast out, it's going to get on whoever's weak. And now they going to take that spirit back to their house. So it came to my mind to ask a sister one question. And I just asked her bluntly. What man came at your house? She got quiet. I asked again. What man came at your house? She said, brother so-and-so. I said, did you have this problem before he came there? She said, no. I said, that's your problem. He's a spirit carrier. So I prayed over the phone. I, I told her I'm not coming there. I prayed over the phone. I told her eventually things that die down. But make sure Igor don't come back. <laughs> yeah. I told her, you make sure Igor don't come back. Keep Igor out of there. Called me about two days later. She said, everything calmed down. She said, I owe my life to you. I said, no, you don't. You owe it to God. All I did was pray. You don't owe me nothing. She told me, she said, I learned my lesson. She said, another man would never step foot in here. I said, well, you better be careful about what sister you let in there too. This is not a man thing. This is just a devilish thing. 
Holy Ghost said. It is good for a man not to touch a woman. You don't trust yourself? You don't? Stop talking that get on my own stuff. Shut your mouth up. Thing you need to do is get on your knees. Fast and pray and ask God to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Well, suppose somebody come knock on my door. I don't want to be rude. You talk like a weak infidel. Why are they knocking at your door? They ain't your husband. Stand outside in the rain. Stay out. He ain't your husband. He ain't got no business there. I don't care if it's raining. No, but you shouldn't have been there. Well, I asked him to come by. Then you're a sinner. And you're hard head. And you're disobedient. And your disobedience alone will mess trying to bring spirits in your place. That's true. Are you listening? Amen. I often sometimes tell you about one of my blood brothers. When we was coming up, he used to talk to a young girl. But the girl, mother, dealt in witchcraft. One night when he was coming home and he came in the house, spirits followed him. He ran all the way home and fell back on the couch, tired. And the spirit followed him from that girl's house and the spirit got right on top of him. He said he felt the hands when it went round his neck and felt the hair of a woman in his face. And his eyes was open, fighting, but he couldn't see nobody. Then when that spirit stopped, he jumped up and ran upstairs to his room. Mommy turned the light on. It was like something from the exorcist. Pictures start flying off the wall. Imagine you going to your house. Spirits, pictures flying all off the wall, turning your table over. You are moving the church. <laughs> Might come in here and find you taking a shower right in the bathroom. What are you doing in here? Oh, I live in church now, Pastor. Did somebody tell you? <laughs> Glory to God. Eh? You see, when I got married or had it in mind to get married, my mind went further than being in love with my wife. It went further than that. I was looking at the spiritual side. The spiritual side, not just how much she loved God, not just how much she can be a help to me spiritually, but to make sure that there was no connection and no relation and no tagging along with the devil. Because if I had peace as a single man, you ain't bringing no demon in my house. I don't care if you're so built until you make airplanes fall. On me step outside, all the passengers got parachutes jumping out the plane. Mm -mm, no, I have no demons coming in my house. Being concerned about spirits to me outweighed how much I love her. Because if you love someone and they possess the devil, you know how much you got to fight them. Then that spirit getting your children. Spirit of the devil is a roaming spirit. It roams. Read your Bible. It roams. And when prayers made and it come out, he roams until he find another place to go. <laughs> you young men that want to be married, you can't be married. You want to be a married man and still act like a hoodlum. And you're in the church, your wife act like a young lady, and you still want to be a hooker. <laughs> Got to be some changes about you. Am I right? You got a decent young lady in the church, and you claim you're a decent young man, but yeah, you act, you act like a hooker. You're out in the street, girl. Yeah, you know. They see your wife. Bless you, Lord. God bless you, Lord. And 
and you. Yo, what's up? Hey, what's up? Hey, hey, Freddy. Yo. About for all time. Yo, yo, Freddy. Here you going out to dinner. Sister, young lady, sit down. And you like, <laughs> grabbing yourself. <laughs> What's wrong with you? There's man, then there's gentlemen. There's certain things you gotta outgrow, man. Certain characteristics you got to outgrow. I came from the hood. But me and my wife go somewhere and she ain't holding my hand. I'm like. He ain't doing that. People see me know who I am. Even young men. I say, yes, sir. No, I just do. I'm trying to teach them that. How to say, sir. Not just, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What? Where you gonna get that? Uh. They don't understand say what? Uh. <laughs> Just grunt. Uh. The woman's supposed to be feminine. Not the man. And ain't no woman should have to get on her husband and tell him, you know what, you just act too feminine. You something wrong, you, you act too feminine. God said, let us make feminine. <laughs> let us make man. Make what? Man. Amen. So if the woman you got in mind to marry act like a lady, what do you think you? Well, I'm like, I wonder, I wouldn't even want a son-in-law come around me like he's a, a hood rat. You will be an embarrassment. Are you listening? Amen. Be concerned how you look from head to toe. When you're home, if you want to look like a rug rat, that's your business. You go out in public, always be concerned how you look from head to toe. Not walking around with a something, your fingernails look like mud. Keep yourself clean from head to toe. I was raised that way. I was raised that way. God is a clean God and a sweet smelling savior. <laughs> Amen. What is that? It is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. There's too many young women in the streets now with babies and no husband. Baby after baby after baby after baby. Four and five and six babies that ain't never got married. I never stop preaching this. The weather's starting to change too. That means the baby boom gonna be again. Never get married. Baby after baby after baby after baby. No shame. You have a child out of wedlock and you get pregnant before the child is born. You better come before the church and repent. Open. Open. Not in my office. Open. The brother and the sister. Open. Amen. Why open, Pastor Jenny? Because eventually it's going to be open. Huh? That stomach ain't gonna get like that from collard greens. 
you're going to have a child out of wedlock and break God's commandment and commit fornication and you end up pregnant, that brother and that sister must come before the church and openly repent and mean it. We don't have no baby shower for a child born out of wedlock. No. No. Fornication is still fornication and the child out of wedlock according to the Bible is still a bastard. You got to love it but God gave it a title bastard. Give me the book of Hebrews. I know some will find this offensive and I don't care who does. Oh, I ain't never coming back. Don't, don't blame me. What I'm preaching is in the Bible. I believe the 12th chapter of the book of Hebrews. If he be without chastisement. Book of Hebrews chapter 12 and at verse 6. Listen. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth. Whom the Lord loveth, he chastises. He chasteneth. And, and scores of every son whom see, he was. If the Lord loves you, he lay you out. And then when I do it with the Bible, right away they say, he don't love. Pastor Dennis ain't got no love. I'm trying to teach these young men how to be good, strong, God-fearing young men and not a bunch of bums. I'm trying to teach these young girls, get off your back. Close your legs. Get up. You don't trust yourself, you ain't ready to get on your own. You don't talk about moving and getting on your own. And you only got $2,000 in the bank or $6. Man, by the time you pay the rent and all that other stuff is going to be gone. I was raised, my father taught me common sense. You got to have a cushion. You got to have a plan. That's the truth of it. You don't, you don't go out and try it to see can you do it. No. Life, you know, you know, that's foolish thinking. That's not mature thinking. I'm not going to try to drink poison. There's a big old jar and the stuff in it is clear with a skull on it. Poison. I'm not going to try to drink it to see do I have faith. God is not tempted with evil. When I left home, I was ready. I had money saved up. And my father told me, he said, don't be in a hurry to go nowhere. Wait till you get ready to get married, then save. He said, then after you leave, when you get your apartment, do not. And he, he was shaking his fingers in my face. He said, don't you be hopping from apartment to apartment to apartment to apartment and you never own no home. He said, when you get your first apartment, save enough, and when you leave there, go into a house. He told me that straight up. Are you folk listening to me? get as mad as you want. You know I'm not moved by that. Some of you don't have no father and not having none cause you to make a lot of mistakes. And if you can go back, you'll rethink some things and redo them. Some of you got a father and still too hard head to listen. And then when he died, you want to pull him out the casket. Oh, daddy. Oh, oh. Get your snotty nose away from that grave. You wouldn't hear him when he was living. Don't be a hypocrite and act like you miss him so much. If my children don't want to obey me and don't respect me and don't honor and hear me and their mother while we live, when we die, don't even come to the gravesite. Because if you can't respect the living, you ain't got no honor for the dead. The dead know of nothing. It is the living that can do for you now. Am I right, sir? 
Sometimes the most hard head child want to pull mama out, out the casket. I want my mama. I want my mom. I want my daddy records. I want my mom. He slapped his mother. He cussed his mother out. He tried to rape his mother. He knocked his mother down the step. And then when she died, mama, mama. That's hypocrisy. You can't honor your parents while they live. You don't deserve to see them when they die. Because if you dishonor your parents while they live and don't repent to them while they live and they die, all your deeds that you've done against them will fix you in judgment. Even if you got a no good father or a no good mother, still honor and respect them as your father and their mother and your mother. You ain't got to agree with their wickedness, but honor them as father and mother. Because I do admit, some of these men don't deserve to be a father. Some of these women should never got pregnant. <laughs> All right, listen. Amen. Now, which way the spirit went? <laughs> yeah, here now. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Whom chasing. the Lord love, he chasteneth. He chasteneth. And score of every son whom he receives. Every son. God, all of us, sometime in our life, will be scourged by the Lord. That's right. All of us. Son. All right. If ye endure chastening. If ye endure chastening. God dealeth with you as with sons. God deal with you as with sons. For what son is whom the father chasteneth not? What son is him whom the father will not chase? But if he be without chastisement. Do you hear this church? Do you hear this scripture? But if. If he be without. He be without chastisement. chastisement whereof all are partakers. Who are partakers? All are partakers. If we don't have no chastisement, what did God call us? Then are ye bastards. What? Then are ye bastards. Don't get upset with me. I didn't put that in the Bible. Then are ye bastards. Book of Hebrews chapter 12 and at verse 8. If you don't have chastisement, the Lord said you're what? Bastards. Bastards and not what? And not sons. You're not a son. I told my sons and daughters my over. You ain't married, don't bring me no children. None. None. I didn't tell them that and then flip it and say, well, mistakes happen. I kept it like that. None. You don't tell a child not to do something and then tell them. Well, if you do, no, 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 no. You don't tell a child to abstain and then give out condoms. Talk to me. I ain't going to tell you don't bring it and then tell you if it happened, if nothing. I'm going to keep it. Don't bring it. Keep it parked right there. Everlasting quarters in that meter. Don't bring it. 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 <laughs> and I'm telling all you the same thing. You ain't married. No babies. If you're a young man and ain't married, there's no shame if you're still a virgin. There ain't no shame. Virginity ain't just a woman thing. You're a man, there's no shame in being clean till you get married. Don't think otherwise. And you fathers, don't be so street ignorant that you encourage your sons. Well, look, young, look, when I was your age, I got every woman I could. What is that to tell your son? You know, there's some things about yourself you don't tell your children. Because they may go out and repeat what you've done. Thinking the reason why you're telling them 
they shouldn't do it. A fool has known how. Am I right? Yeah. Some things you've done, don't tell your children. And then when you tell them you brag, like it was something big and something good and it was pure sin. Who advertised they sin but a fool? There's some things some women had to do to keep food in their children's mouth. It's best children never know. Because they may think it's all right for me to do it. There's some laws that some fathers broke that he never thought he would break to put food on the table. It's best you don't tell your children. All they know I got a working dad. Keep it that way. Yes. Good you tell your son, well look, well look, hey, I lost my virginity at 12, you know what I mean? So hey, I understand you. you if you got to do it, you just handle your business. Handle your business. Be a man to handle your use a fool. Use a fool. You tell your sons and daughters what God said. What God said is more important than what you want to say. God's first. And the wisdom and the information of God is first. Are you listening? Amen.